Greetings, everyone. Are you an organization that offers credit lending products, or do you know of one? Do you have any financial assets as a consumer and need specific guidelines for your spending habits? Many of us have or know other people who own credit cards. My name is Mwala Mupiri, presenting on Credit Risk Management and Predictive Analytics. Financial safety and security is one of the top priorities for all individuals, nations, and businesses. The main task of this project is to develop instruments that enable financial institutions like Bank of America, Citigroup, or Visa to assess and predict credit risk performance and avoid customer credit defaults. Default is defined as the inability to make a payment based on loan terms. The project contents include credit card history and industry development, project scope, data descriptions in processing, tools and techniques, predictive models, results and insights, recommendations, lessons learned, and references. The concept of buy now, pay later became popular after World War I as the markets were adjusting to increase consumer demands. In the 1920s, banks, retail stores, and financial industry leaders began issuing charge cards to increase brand loyalty. In 1949, Frank McNamara, a businessman in New York City, forgot his wallet while at dinner with his wife. Frank proposed to pay the restaurant back another time instead of washing dishes, but luckily his wife rescued him and paid the tab. Frank went on to start the first cardboard credit card company, the Diners Club, which gained 10,000 members from 28 restaurants and two hotels. In the 1960s and 1970s, plastic cards were introduced while Bank of America competed with the Diners Club network nationwide by licensing their cards to other banks. Bank of America spun off the business, which is known today as Visa. Other companies like MasterCard, Discovery, and American Express followed suit, launched their own cards. Leading into the 1990s to now, credit cards are an integral part of our lives with roughly 80% of families having some type of credit card. The buy now and pay later finance structure has snuck into most durable goods with reward points as well as a system to keep customers and consumers engaged. Although consumers earn flexibilities, overall economies still face a great risk in managing credit. Credit card debt is closely tied to overall economic indicators. Historically, recessions or financial contraction times have been shown to have high percentages of credit default, as shown in the image. Banks and other financial institutions could benefit greatly from a tool that models and flags possible credit card default rates by their customers. The flags could be triggered by the predictive model to cluster customers at risk of default and generate products to mitigate risk. Credit card default rates are typically higher than other default rates from auto or home consumption. Project scope. Credit default hurts all stakeholders, including financial institutions, other consumers through higher interest rates, and the overall businesses and economies contracts because there's a gap in liquidity of funds. The scope of this project is to develop and deliver predictive credit rating and risk mitigation models and budgeting applications by determining consumer probability of default through supervised classification methods. The study combines data sets from multiple sources, restructures the data sets to fit SAS, Watson Analytics, and other data analytics tools for model development and testing. The data includes multiple sources to analyze variance and time series relationships. Civilian unemployment rate data is retrieved from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. The unemployment rate is seasonally adjusted to remove any cyclical noise. Consumer credit debt is also retrieved from the Federal Reserve with three variables including time period, total consumer credit, and total consumer credit rate of change. Macroeconomic data is important because it could bring insight as economic indicators with correlations or variances depending on the economic environment.
Federal funds rate data from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis is also extracted to obtain a heartbeat monitor of one of the most important federal bank lending rates. The federal funds rate is a discounted lending window rate that is only available to certain federally regulated banks that are able to borrow funds at a discount rate. Credit card default records are also retrieved from University of California Irvine Machine Learning Database. This is the main training data for predictive models. This includes 24 variables and a default target variable, which is shown in the sample image, denoted by 1 for default and 0 for no default. The currency fields have dollar amounts denoted in U Taiwan dollar, which is about $29 for every 1 US dollar. This data is important to understand the current variables and how they affect credit card default in terms of their association and variable importance. Payment history variables were expected to be important with the default status. Tools and techniques. The study employs different tools including RStudio, Tableau, Watson Analytics, and SAS Enterprise Miner, and Python. RStudio is used to complete most of the pre-processing, data manipulation, and standardized workload to create some analysis graphs on the variables. Tableau is used to deep dive into the different correlations and forecast business trends, especially on the economic data for dashboard preparations. Watson Analytics is an IBM software and is used to review the driving factors for the target variable and discover other insights using natural language processing with questions. SAS Enterprise Miner is utilized to generate variable importance models, further transform the data, and generate predictive models. Python is used to create the budget and applications for consumer education, empowerment, and spending guidelines. Data Preprocessing Data quality is a critical area of this project and is reviewed using data preprocessing methods in terms of data cleaning, integration, transformation, and data reduction. Descriptive analytics, as well as statistics, are run to review the range, outliers, and clusters. This is typically done to remove any noise data that may not be relevant to the objective of the project. Variables are scaled using logarithmic transformation because some of the ranges, like credit balance, have a wide distribution. Data dimensions are reduced with Binning methods to categorize continuous numeric intervals. Relationships are discovered in terms of variability and correlations, such as payment status and probability of default being closely associated. Predictive algorithms. To facilitate consistency and accuracy, models were ran in SAS Enterprise Miner. Predictive algorithms include decision trees, gradient boosting, neural networks, support vector machines, and ensemble models. On the top left, decision trees, from a visual standpoint, generate the root and the branch nodes that are differentiated by partitioning points within the data. The partitions are formulated into rules in terms of an if, x, then y logic. In the initial model testing, Decisions, decision trees performed well, so gradient boosting was added as another partitioning algorithm, which creates a series of decision trees to form a single predictive model. Support vector machine model constructs a set of hyperplanes that maximize the margin between two classes, as shown in the bottom left corner. On the top right, neural networks utilize input data through to hidden nodes lead into output target nodes. Neural networks run iterations using different training methods such as R propagation or the popular back propagation. And finally, the ensembles on the bottom right intake multiple models to generate an average or a maximum probability voting method. The voting method utilizes posterior probabilities to classify the target variable. Model results. Misclassification rate is used as a selection criterion 
in model comparisons for performance. Multiple decision tree models were generated with different sampling methods and seed and initializers to ensure randomly selected partitions. The decision trees performed the best by a margin of 82.64% accuracy. Initially, decision tree 3 performed below decision tree 1, but after some parameter tuning to increase the iterations from 50 to 100, on decision tree three, decision tree three overtook the lead with better fitness model. The percentage points may seem small, but they can make large differences when dealing with big data. Surprisingly, the ensemble model did not perform as well as expected considering the combination of other predictive models. The high performance support vector machine and gradient booster models were not the top performers on new data. And after reviewing the purpose of high performance nodes, it made a little bit more sense. The high performance nodes are able to train models at a faster rate, which could be beneficial in classifying live streaming data, but not necessarily in static data. Application results. On the other side, a Python income and expense analysis tool is developed to assist consumers with their debt management. According to a recent survey by the American Consumer Credit Council, 43% of consumers don't know what the recommended spending guidelines are for a budget. This application also is critical because it offers financial education and spending guidelines in a simpler manner. Users can enter their income sources and expenditures to view whether they're negative or positive with their budget and scenarios. Users can increase the overall risk of credit default through empowerment, self-awareness, and gain more information as education through an application. Project Insights. With the predictive models and budget and applications, this study touches base on critical areas of the business operations and consumer education to be able to answer questions such as which customers are at high risk of defaulting next month or the next couple of periods, which customers would we target with a credit modification program to assist with their debt management? How can we create products that are categorized based on the risk evaluations and increase revenue for stakeholders while growing the company? Organizations could ultimately use these instruments to empower their decision making, forecast and economic trends, and at the same time, empower their customer base. And looking at the recent trends in personalized demands, when consumers make well-informed decisions, they're more likely to demand personalized products. And also, with these type of tools, we can answer questions such as which customers or credit applications are likely to have a high response rate and benefit from a push notification that's coming from a budget and application. Project recommendations. These include attempting to run these types of models in a live stream and data environment to review differences in model performance, add in more economic data, and finding a way to bind it with credit card default data using timestamps for merging all the data together. Minimizing the array of tools simply because you have a better area to deep dive in and including data showing tax revenue as well as the distribution for insight on how tax regulation impacts credit card risk. Further research into how large organizations that are too big to fail manage their credit defaults and manage their credit risk being that they're federally regulated and supported.
improving the budgeting application to scrape transactions and develop data warehousing to automatically track and report month over month or year over year spending to help users and consumers be self-aware of their budgeting as well as spending. Projects, lessons learned. Inability to make liability payments on recent historical transactions indicate higher consumer credit risk. Obtaining the right data is challenging and requires time and patience. Business goals and data security are essential, especially when attempting to gain buy-in from management. Data pre-processing is a critical area and it's important to understand that it's an iterative process where one has to revert back to the data configuration as almost as a tune-in process for the model performance. And it's also important to review the model configuration as part of the selection criterion in terms of performance because different selection criterions end up offering different model performance results and there's no one-size-fits-all model. For example, the mean squared error being used as a selection criterion ends up having the neural network as the top model. So it just depends on the parameter tuning and the selection criterion being used for assessing model performance. Here are the references utilized for this project. Both credit card organizations and consumers can benefit from models and applications discussed in this study. For questions regarding this study or its resources, please use the contact information and thank you.